Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at the BIOS inside the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. Keep watching to learn more. Okay, so this is the uh, the BIOS for the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. Now we've just done a BIOS flash on this particular board, so this is the first screen we've seen after. And I do apologise if you can hear some fan noises. Unfortunately, my microphone is a little bit close to the uh, the fans on this. So, again, yes, I do apologise. But onward and upwards. So, we'll click OK and we can go into the BIOS and uh, see exactly what's going on. So, this is the first screen that you'll normally see. So, this is in currently in easy mode, as we can see in the top there. And you've got the time and date, etc. We are connected to the internet currently. And if you click on the settings cog at the top there, you can actually change your system time and date, etc. Although generally this will be set by the actual system itself. So yeah, no, uh, no worries there. There is like a weird lag in this BIOS. I'm not too sure exactly why it is, but there does seem to be a lag. So it isn't your screen is uh, unfortunately part and parcel of how this, uh, this kind of mini OS works or UEFI BIOS works. So information-wise, top left-hand corner, uh, Aorus Master, BIOS version F13H, which is the latest version. Processor we're using on this is a Ryzen 5 Pro 3400G, which technically isn't compatible with this board, but it seems to boot up, so uh, yeah, we're happy with that at the moment. 16 gigs of RAM on there, currently running at their default DDR speeds, so we're, we're going to change that very shortly. CPU frequency is shown, CPU temp, voltages, etc, etc. And any connected SATA devices would normally show up in this section here. And underneath we've got Smart Fan 5, which is monitoring all of our eight fan headers. Down in the bottom corner here we've got Boot Sequence. It says no bootable device found, so it's because we've got no drives plugged in currently. In this section here, SATA normally, if you go to PCIe, it'll tell you what drives are connected. And also, obviously, M.2 connectivity, etc, etc. Option here for turning on the AMD RAID Expert. Choose that on or off, just toggle the on or off. And we've got options here for English, help is F1, advanced mode is F2, directly into Smart Fan 5 is F6, loading the optimized defaults, which is F7, to enter key flash to flash the bus from a USB within this UEFI interface, you can press F8, save and exit is F10, and your favorites are F11. So yeah, pretty straightforward. For most people, I think, chances are when you first go in, you can end up going in, choose your uh, profile, now this is running on a Ryzen 5 Pro 3400G, so I don't think the XMP profile is going to quite work at uh, 3600. So let's head over into advanced mode by pressing F2, and then we get advanced mode. So it's quite a nice boss layout here. There's not a great deal going on, but certainly you can see what is going on. So you've got your favorites, which goes into some of your quick access things you may want to go to. You can make these and edit these however you see fit. Uh, entirely up to you. So you've got CPU clock ratio, you've got the clock control XMP profile or extreme memory profile, vCore, load line calibration and CSM support. So if you want to, if you've got a slightly older system then you can enable CSM support or disabled, whichever you choose. Load line calibration, got some pretty easy things to go through there. Vault loading tells you the scaling, what's going on, etc. vCore again, same sort of deal. So we can then go into Tweaker. So this is where most of you are probably going to end up. So we've got our CPU clock controls, red spectrum control, CPU clock ratio, all those kind of usual settings, advanced CPU settings. So we click on that one and it goes into core performance boost. So that's your precision boost overclocking. So you can choose enabled or disabled on there or also rather. SMV, so that is your virtual machine. So if you want to have a virtual machine running some kind of emulation or possibly Docker container, those kinds of things, then you can use SMV for that, virtual machines. Uh, yeah, most of you probably won't need it, but if you do, that's how you enable it or disable, so we'll leave it as enabled. Cool and quiet function, that's AMD's built-in cool and quiet for the fans and temperatures, etc. So again, enabled or disabled. Your PPC adjustments, your various states there, there's three states available, state zero is the one it's left to. Global C state control, you've got power supply idle control, down core control and SMT mode, so you can enable or disable simultaneous multi-threading or essentially hyper-threading. So if you've got a 16-core processor and it's got 32 threads, 
you can disable that so it's just running in the core mode rather than cores and threads. Uh, I would leave that to auto unless you have a reason not to. So go press escape there. Go back into tweaker. So extreme memory profile, game profile one, uh, system and memory multiplier, it's automatic. And advanced memory settings there. You click on advanced memory settings, you've got memory subtimings. So again, you can change those, configure those individually, however you see fit. Obviously from your uh, RAM sticks would be ideal, but if you were trying to overclock a little bit, you can change those frequencies and things like that. So hit escape and go back. And also you can read your SPD info directly from the sticks themselves. And depending on which slot you've actually got your memory in. So you can see there I've got two identical sticks. Well, apart from the actual serial number. Again, reads off all the information. So you can press escape. That's one thing which doesn't work particularly well, I find, on gigabyte boards. You press escape, and I don't want to do that. I just want to go back to the previous level menu, which it won't let you do. So, yeah, press escape. Normally, you can press escape and go back a level, so you have to click on tweaker again and go in that way. So, uh, again, XMP profiles, CPU vCore, vCore for the SOC. This board has actually got 16 phases, so you've got a lot to actually play with on here. So in the CPU VRM settings, you've got your load line calibration, and there's a, a ton of different options there. Again, unless you know exactly what you're doing, probably best left on auto. And you've got the same for the SOC, lots of options there. Uh, V-Core protection you've got set, and SOC protection, V-Core current protection, and PWM phase control, again, you can choose those. Only play with them if you know exactly what you're doing, otherwise you can get into a whole lot of trouble. And again, try and press escape, but it doesn't want to do it. So we've got to click on that again. Uh, yeah, CPU clock control. There's your memory multiplier, so you can choose which one. I'm gonna try 2933 for that particular RAM. So if you've got fast RAM, 3600 or above, and you're using a slightly older processor, which actually doesn't support those kind of frequencies or doesn't want to boot with that, you can set your system memory multiplier to something a little bit less than the standard. And you might be able to actually tighten up the timings as well when you do that, okay, entirely up to you. So, no, can't press escape. So let's go back into settings now. So you've got platform power, AC back. So if you have a power cut, you can choose whether it's got memory, so whether it comes back on if it was on, uh, always on or always off. I'm gonna choose memory. ERP, which is your uh, kind of low power modes or energy efficiency. So you can choose enabled or disabled. Soft off by power button. You've got option for instant off or delay for seconds. Um, power loading option auto enabled or disabled. So I'll leave that as auto. Uh, resume by alarm. You can choose to have that enabled and then you can have wake up times for your system. I'll leave that disabled. Don't want your PC turn on automatically. Uh, wake on LAN is enabled as default, and the high precision event timer is enabled, and also CEC 2019 ready is disabled. And you can't press escape. So you can press escape in some menus, but not others. So IO ports, we've got the option for uh, initial display output. So if you've got multiple graphics cards for some reason or other, and you, you want to choose which one boots up, or if you've got an IGP or IGD, or APU or whatever you want to call it. So you can choose to boot from the onboard graphics first of all. Yeah. There's the options for slots. So obviously PCIe one slot is your top slot, two is the middle slot, and three is the bottom slot. So I will set that as the uh, IGT video for now because that is what we've got. Uh, integrated graphics, you've got auto, forced, or disabled. So again, depending on your usage, if, if you've bought a APU and because you can't get a graphics card, but then you find later on you have got a graphics card, you can choose to disable the onboard graphics should you wish to, or set it to auto. HD audio controller, and that's for your onboard audio, so enabled or disabled, and above 4G decoding. So that is, uh, if your system supports or your GPU supports 64-bit PCI encoding, you can leave that 
enabled or disabled and totally up to you. Mostly for really is kind of I guess is going to be for mining and that sort of stuff. So we'll leave that enabled. Onboard LAN controller. So you've got the onboard 2.5 gigabit LAN. So if you want to, you can enable or disable that. Choice is yours. Uh, USB Type C with Titan Ridge configuration. So you've got security levels which you can have on that port. Got to be honest with you, don't really understand what that's about, but still, it's there anyway. Uh, USB configuration, so you've got legacy USB support. So if you want to use uh, a slightly older operating system and it doesn't have support for USB 3.0, then you can enable it so that it will support legacy devices via legacy 2.0 support. And also you've got the HCI handoff, which is essentially the same sort of thing. So this is actually trying to make your USB devices, such as your keyboard and mouse work, in the BIOS or in the kind of setup stages of those slightly older operating systems which don't directly support it. Also you've got your USB mass storage driver support, you can have that enabled or disabled and the port 60 stroke 64 emulation, uh, disabled or enabled. This again is for kind of non-USB aware operating systems, you can choose to have that enabled or disabled. Most people are going to be using Windows I think with these kind of uh, things now or modern distros of Linux so you should be absolutely fine there. And yeah, we can press escape this time and it works, excellent. So NVMe configuration, uh, we've got no devices currently installed, so if you want to make any changes there, you can do. SATA configuration, again, we've got no drives connected, as you can see, not installed. And you've got the choice of AHCI or you can enable the kind of software RAID. And you've got the NVMe RAID control mode, you can have enabled or disabled. And the chipset SATA port enabled. So you can actually, if you want to, you can disable the onboard SATA ports. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but certainly you can do, it is an option. Next one is your network stack, so you can enable or disable, this is for booting from ROMs, etc. over the network. And also you've got options for the Realtek controller there, gives you the UEFI driver information, MAC address, etc, etc. I think that's pretty much it in there. So we can escape one level, but we can't the other. Fantastic. So let's go into miscellaneous. So LEDs in system power state, so you can choose to have the LEDs on or off. For some of you, you're probably going to want to turn those off, so RGBs in uh, hibernate or whatever, you can choose on or off. LEDs in sleep hibernation and soft off states, so you can choose again on or off. So if you want it to be in your bedroom and you want your bedroom to not be illuminated with your RGBs on the board or a RAM, etc., when it's in sleep hibernation or kind of standby modes, then you can have that set off and obviously LEDs in system power on state. So when the PC's on normally, you can have them on or if you don't like RGB, then again, you can just choose off. Choice is yours. Uh, PCI Express 16 slot configuration. You can choose which gen it supports. So if you set it to auto, then obviously it's gonna support the highest one it possibly can. Uh, if you've got a specific device or a graphics card which only supports a certain gen or you've got maybe a, uh, a riser cable coming from your PCI Express slot into a graphics card for vertical mounting. Some of those cheaper cables don't support Gen 4, so you might need to manually select Gen 3. Again, that is going to be down to the individual. Uh, PCI slot configuration, again, same sort of thing for the, the lower slots. So you can choose which you have there. Auto is probably going to be best. Then you've got PCI Express ASPM mode, um, disabled. L0 entry, L1 entry, L0 and L1 entry. No idea what that means, but somebody might. A 3D Mark 01 enhancement. So this is for enhancing stuff in benchmarks. Never quite understood why this was even an option, but it is there. Uh, IOMU is for use with kind of uh, virtualization, that kind of thing, and moving ports virtually. So you can choose to have that an auto enabled or disabled. Got AMD CPU um, trusted platform module built-in one so you can choose to enable or disable if you're possibly installing uh, Windows 11 on your device you may need to have that activated for the uh, the version that was leaked ages ago but yeah you can cho choose enabled or disabled and trusted computing again you can uh, enable or disable stuff if you've got specific TPM modules that are installed on the board so that is uh, pretty much it for that section so AMD CBS, so CPU common options, things in here, global C states, uh, L2 table lookups, all that kind of stuff. 
Again, most of this stuff in here, you probably won't want to go playing around with too much unless you know exactly what it is you're looking at. Again, DF common values, got DRAM scrub times. Yeah, very, very kind of high-end stuff in here. So most of it, I haven't got a clue to be honest with you, but there you go. Uh, UMC common options, you've got DDR timing common options, memory mapping, uh, DV DIM, and memory BIST, MBIST, yep, that's right. MBIO common options, uh, FCH common options, so this is your SATA configuration, SATA support, USB support, power loss options. Again, some of this is very similar to what we've seen already. 12C configuration, UART devices, so you can enable or disable those. ESPI enable, again, a lot of this stuff, I have no idea what it means. <coughs> Um, you've got options for using uh, eMMC or SD devices for booting, etc., and for as a driver, Microsoft driver, etc., AMD driver. So if you are using one of those types of drives, it's unlikely you will be, but the options there. Uh, you've got LPC control and system control, and you've got a chipset common options. So SATA configuration. Again, it's uh, all very, very similar now, like enhanced control. AMD overclocking is where most of you probably want to end up. So you have to click on accept to go in. So you've got manual CPU overclocking. So you can uh, type in your frequency manually there and uh, choose a frequency. Obviously, voltage as well you can do and core count control. You've got the options there. So auto, one, two, three. Again, this might be different depending on which, uh, what processor you actually have installed. Uh, manual IGPU, so if you've got an APU, then you can go in and change the clock frequency and voltages there for APU, such as the 3400G, 2400G, and the, the newer ones which are coming out. Uh, DDR and Infinity Fabric timings, so you can go in there and choose your DRAM timing for overclocking, and this gives you all kinds of uh, enhanced control. Probably best left also if you're not sure what you're doing. And you've got DRAM controllers, CAD bus configuration, data bus configuration, and Infinity Fabric and dividers. So it's actually not letting me change that at all. So we'll ignore that for now. Uh, SOC voltages, SOC uncore OC, and VDDP voltage control. So you can choose auto or manual. Tons and tons of stuff here. Literally is so much stuff. This is one where it's a little bit interesting. So we've got PC health. So you've got all your core voltages and stuff and you've got the reset case open status. So if you've got a, uh, a case open switch connected to the board, you can choose to have that working or not. Okay, so the next one is Smart Fan 5. So Smart Fan 5 you can click on or you can press F6. So let's press F6. And there we go, we go straight into Smart Fan 5. Now, if there's any of you out there that are actually experiencing issues with this, where you're finding your BIOS to be particularly laggy or slightly unresponsive, you may find it's down to being a failing or underpowered power supply. I know it sounds like a very weird thing, but it does seem some people have experienced this. So if you're experiencing a sluggish BIOS menu, it's basically a power supply. Anyway, I digress. So in SmartFan 5, you've got the monitor section at the top here. So you can choose CPU fan, CPU fan opt, which is what we're currently connected to, which is our CPU fan speed is rated there, all the rest of them there. Five and six are rated as being pump headers as well as being normal fan headers. You've got six in total in here. So that is uh, yeah, pretty crazy. You can change all of your uh, settings in here. So now if we go into CPU opt, and you can change all your settings, do what you want, change to CPU. You can actually change the settings individually. You've got your zero speed as well, fan control. So if you want to, you can set that to zero voltage or PWM. You've got your update timer interval. And you choose from normal, silent, manual, etc. 
So if you go into manual, then you can adjust your curve accordingly. So yeah, all, uh, all pretty decent stuff there. You see our fan speeds coming down a little bit already. We can drop it right down. Adjust the curve kind of as you see fit. And then you can apply that to whichever fan header as you want to. Pretty cool. So you can have individual curve for each individual fan, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, pretty decent stuff. You've also got your temperature up there, fan speeds, your flow rate if you're using water, CPU temperature we've got, so you can monitor what is actually going on. So if you want to monitor something else, so maybe your chipset temperature, you can choose your PCH temperature, CPU temperature, or if you want to, you can choose one of those temperature probes which are included in the packet. So there's a temp one or temp two. So if you've got it on a specific piece of hardware, then you can do it from there. And you've got your temperature warnings. If you get to a certain temperature, you can have those enabled or disabled. Okay, it's entirely up to you. Uh, CPU op fan warning, you've got options for disabled or enabled, depending on what settings you've got and what fans you've got, all that kind of usual stuff. Personally, I think I'd probably end up setting most of this up actually in the uh, the software app within Windows, rather than playing around in here. I actually prefer the app in Windows myself personally. But anyway, so there's Smart Fan 5. And next we can go into System Info up here. So it tells you your BIOS version. As you can see, there's BIOS version F12 on here now. The one that was on here was version F13H, which was a beta version. So taking that off and we've actually flashed backwards to F12. Go your system languages, processor type, etc., MAC addresses, system date, time, and you've got option for plug-in device info. What's connected to what slot? And also you've got in system info. You've got the option for key flash, so you can go into the key flash utility. In boot, we've got the option for boot option priorities. Again, depending on what drives you've got connected, you can choose your boot options, numlock status, etc. Full screen logo, wherever you want that. Fast boot, CSM support, uh, secure boot, and setting passwords. And that is pretty much it. The last one is save and exit. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty much done here. So, we can uh, save and exit. So, you've got the option when you save and exit to save and exit setup. Exit without saving, load the optimized defaults, and you've also got the option for your boot override. So if you've got a USB stick in there and you want to quickly install Windows, then you can choose that and it will boot from that device on the next boot up. So that is uh, pretty much it for a tour of the B550 Aorus Master. Pretty nice little BIOS in there. I'm not convinced it's any uh, nicer than MSI's, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. If there's anything in there which you'd have liked to have seen or that you think I've missed or you'd like more information on, feel free to let us know in the comments. If not, you can join us on our Discord. Links will be in the chat below for that as well also. But I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.